Hey guys, so we've got a big lineup this week. There's been a lot of questions, um, a lot going on with you guys, and so I wanted to make sure that I could give you enough information, um, but I split it into five days because there's so much of this. So what we're doing this week is I'm going to be digging into your gut. Um, if this works for you guys, I'm going to every month maybe do a week where I'm really digging, digging into a big topic to teach you guys. So today is about stress in your gut. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, is diarrhea and constipation. Uh, Wednesday, how to eat on a shift schedule. Thursday is going to be intermittent fasting and um, restrictive diets and how those affect your gut. And the last one on Friday, you definitely don't want to miss that one because that is a game changer. It's a huge electrolyte drink that actually supports your stress system so that when you um, are on the road, when you are working long hours, that you're actually supporting your stress system. And um, I know that in my program, when people start, start using it, they um, actually do find a difference in their gut and as well in their energies and their stress management. So let's dig into today. So today is about stress and your um, and your gut. So the first thing to note is that 90% of your serotonin production, that's your happy, feel-good um, uh, hormone, that's the one that it, when it's really low, that's the one that causes you to be anxious and depressed. That is... Um, made 90% of it is made in your gut. So if your gut is not working the way that it is, then your serotonin can't be um, spread throughout your body. Your gut is actually in charge of a lot of different hormones. And if you've heard me talk before, your um, your stress management system manages 50 different hormone responses, and a lot of them are moved through your gut. So it's really important to make sure that your gut is in check because if not, you don't get a lot of those hormones going around. So your nutrition, or sorry, your um, brain fog, your sleep, your waking, your energy, your moods, your thyroid, um, kidney, liver, your, there's a lot of like, I hear a lot of gallbladder issues and things like that. And those are quite related um, to the gut. Um, a lot of the different hormones as well are related with that. So Understanding that, now understand what stress does to your gut. So, you may have heard me talk about your nervous system. So, you have two different branches that we talk about a lot, and that is your stress nervous system and your resting nervous system. When you are always kicking into your stress system, so pretty much for you guys, it's and it's a perceived stress is what kicks this in. So it is pretty much going to work and putting on your uniform because you really do have to prepare for anything that may happen on shift. And then you're being pushed physically. So there's the physical stress of being of having all your gear on, paramedics, you're lifting people, fire all your gear. Um, you're, you're having to wear all of that for your 12, 24, 48 hour shifts, um, fire when you're going to calls, EMS and police is during your calls. So you have all of these stresses happening in your body and they tend to keep pushing you into your um, stress nervous system keeps, kick, keeps kicking in. Now the thing is, is that our system has not adapted from caveman days. So back then, when you had something that was kicking in your stress, it was usually being chased by your food or starving, um, not being able to get to food uh, and climate issues. And so with us now, our body doesn't know there's so many different stressors. And so your body really thinks you're being chased by a line. It's that fight or flight that we talk about. And when you're in that fight or flight, you don't need to eat um, a, a big meal and you don't need to go to the bathroom. You need to be dealing with the crisis at hand. So what that nervous system does is it actually shuts down or turns down more of your organs and it puts things on the outside. So you end up, um, you end up getting, uh, what's it called? You end up getting the, um, uh, all of your blood pumping and your nerves and everything keeps pushing out into your, um, into your joints so that you have blood and everything to be, to be helping you fight that fight. You also cannot, um, you also then have that adrenaline and everything. And so 
it's all being pushed into your extremities so that you have that extra strength and extra power, but it's taking away from your insides. So your digestive juices start slowing down, your gastric juices, your, um, and, and your colon slows down because you don't need things to be moving through your colon. So it takes that energy and moves it elsewhere. But the thing is, is that when you're having a stress for 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, um, and you're not getting all of those gastric juices, all of the enzymes that you need to break down the food into t tiny enough pieces, what happens is that your gut then can't digest the foods that you're having. So different things can happen. You start getting indigestion. Um, the acids start their... We actually tend to have low acid production, um, whereas most people are under the impression that it's high acid, so they tar start taking things to decrease the acids. Um, when in fact, you really don't, most people are testing, um, in my program at least, most people test that they're really low in acid. And so when you don't have these acids, the foods aren't breaking down. And when the foods aren't breaking down, you have different stages as to how they break down in your, um, in your gut. Certain foods break down in your um, stomach and then they go into your small intestine. They flow through there and then they break down more in your large intestine. But when you are not breaking down these foods properly, what happens is the ones that are supposed to be breaking down more in, in the gut, they're still big. Um, they're bigger chunks. They also haven't pulled out the nutritional value. So they're going through the small intestine, and the small intestine is where the all the nutrients and vitamins are supposed to go through that lining to get into your bloodstream to give you all the minerals and vitamins. And that stops working. So you'll find that no matter how healthy you eat sometimes, that those vitamins and nutrients are never getting to your body because they're not broken down. And then the thing that happens as well is these unbroken down digest, um, unbroken down foods, these unbroken down proteins, they get into the small intestine and they start, they start aggravating it. And the small intestine is only one cell thick. So think these cells are just beside each other, they're lined up and they just create this line. But as they get inflamed, they actually kind of bubble up like this and they get spaces in between. And then through those spaces, these proteins, these um, this food that's not broken down yet actually escapes through the small intestine. And it can go everywhere. So it goes into your brain, it can go in, it goes in your bloodstream and goes all over the place. And so there's more toxins that usually you would be pooping out. You're not pooping out anymore. They're actually going into your body. So this can cause things like more anger, more irritation, more brain fog. Um, there's actually cases with um, ADHD and autism where they're finding that when they actually heal this leaky gut, that a lot of their symptoms decrease. It doesn't get rid of autism or ADHD, but it really does make it more manageable and palatable for people when um, they don't have all of these other triggers floating around, these stressors floating around in their bodies. So that's a huge one for you guys. And so when this small intestine, they get these, these breaks in between there, get all the bad stuff going, but the good stuff isn't getting out because it's not being broken down in the food. And then you end up in the colon with larger chunks of food. So some of you may be experiencing things where um, you try to eat greens, you can't eat like raw vegetables and stuff. They are coming out just as they went in. They're not breaking down. And that is because of everything we talked about. It's because you don't have the, the acids that are breaking it down. Um, it's because your, your small intestine is completely aggravated as well and it's not doing what it does. And then by the time it gets to the colon, the colon is just getting totally backed up with, with food that's too large that it can't break down itself. Even though it is pretty much a beast, it still can't get it. So it's really important to understand that um, long-term stress of not getting that that nervous system um, in control of learning how to click it in and out. Um, many of you will find that how you know if you're in that stress system often is if you breathe through your mouth more. So take note when you're sleeping. That's usually the easiest time to really figure it out. Are you breathing through your mouth? Do you wake up with this dry mouth, with this gross taste in your mouth? Um, do you uh, snore? Do you have sleep apnea? These are all things that 
are happening only when you are using that stress nervous system. So if you tick off any of those, then you know that your body is switching into that stress nervous system a lot, and it means you're switching into it when you're sleeping. So that means that you're getting even less of that digestion going and less of your colon moving um, from the stress. So and the thing with this is that it's not like a one thing. It's not like, hey, let me just go fix my gut because if you don't get your nervous system um, on track, if your nervous system is always firing, um, you could go and do all these things to keep, you know, test your stomach acids, see if they're okay. Um, see if they're low and start doing things to be increasing your stomach acids. But if your nervous system is firing and firing all the time and and slowing it down, you're pretty much maybe taking like one step forward, two step backs, or maybe one step forward, one back. So you're not getting any change in it, even though you're doing the right step, you're doing the right thing, you're just not doing it in the right order. So it's really important to get that nervous system calmed first, to be able to train your resting nervous system and then your, your um, stress nervous system to be, um, be able to switch in and out of them. So when you're home, you're calmer um, and your gut gets to do what it needs to do. There's, there's different steps in different orders. Once you get your nervous system to a point, then you can do certain steps with your gut. And then once your gut is at a point with that, then you need to move a little bit more with your nervous system. And it's kind of like a dance back and forth with each of them so that you can be healing one and then getting the other and making sure that your gut is really in check. And then um, the hormones is another big aspect of that as well, where um, I know in, in my program, we do this boost of hormones in the beginning. Um, and understanding that when you do this boost to your hormones it does give you back that motivation and drive because it's realigning your hormones but if you don't get your nervous system and the gut fixed then those hormones just totally get messed up again and we need to then fix your hormones even more beyond that but we can't do that until your nervous system and your guts there so it's this whole process where doing one is may help you temporarily but it's not going to be the long-term solution it's got to be all three so really understanding how that nervous system being in that stress state for long times really plays that role on the gut but how both need to heal and get those hormones pumping too because once you get your gut going if your hormones are still not working the way that they're supposed to those 50 hormones that your stress management system manages then um then your gut can't really get them all around or they can't really get that serotonin and everything going. And and making sure that, for those of you that missed this at the beginning, that your gut is responsible for 90% of your serotonin production. So if you're on antidepressants, anti-anxiety meds, um, quite often what they do is they're upregulating your serotonin, your happy, feel-good um, uh, hormone, your relaxed hormone. So if your gut is out of whack and you're taking these these meds, these anti-anxiety, anti-depressant anti, um, meds, it, it explains why you need them, right? So you need to be able to first fix the gut so that it can start regulating your own natural serotonin and then you can, with your doctor's help, get you off of off of the meds. So that's how we get a lot of people in, in the 911 Elite Performance Program, how we get them off their anti-meds, um, how we get their gut back in order, how we realign things. And, and it is, it's like this dance. It's this dance that you need to know how much to be pushing one before you go into the other. And if you guys are anything like me, it's hard to be patient when you're like, okay, I know what the next step is. I want to go and do it now, but you have to make sure that your nervous system and your gut are in check first. So let me know if anybody has any questions on that. Um, poke any or put any of your questions below in here and I will answer them for you. Keep an eye out for tomorrow when we're digging into diarrhea and constipation. That is a fascinating one. Um, I just probably TMI, but I, when I was going through all of this myself, I was waking up to rush to the washroom and it was getting earlier and earlier and earlier every day. And 
Um, I honestly thought I had diarrhea and it actually was that I was constipated. Um, and so I was going through diarrhea treatment for a while until, um, we realized I was actually constipated of which I'm going to explain how you can have diarrhea and be constipated at the same time or just have diarrhea or just have constipation and how they all work with your stress system. So tune into that one tomorrow. Um, it will be in the group as well, three o'clock Eastern standard time. Um, and the replay will be living in the group for you guys. So any questions, pop them below and I'm here to help.